Thank you for standing by, and welcome to the BUN webcast. During today's webcast, attendees will be in listen-only mode. There will be a Q&A session at the end of today's call. If you have a question during the presentation, you may submit it online by entering it into the QA panel. If you're in full screen view, click the question icon located in the floating toolbar at the lower side of your screen. Simply type a question into the dialog box and click the send button. If you're in the split screen mode, the Q&A panel is already open and is located on the lower right side of your screen. As a reminder, this presentation is being recorded. If you are experiencing technical issues, please contact WebEx Technical Support. Our speaker today is Guido Day, Manager Technical Support. Guido, please go ahead. Hi, everybody. So today I would like to talk about the FastCup UL released machine. Uh, whoever is watching this video right at this point got at one point trained on the equipment and uh, probably has seen the unit in a slightly different way how it is actually built right at this point. You don't have to take any notes. Uh, you will get um, a recording available after this uh, meeting as well. Uh, you can always ask uh, questions um, and uh, we will answer these questions at the end of the session. So. Um, Pre-production units versus UL, what does that really mean? We built beta units in 2019 and they had been installed in the market and we built basically from January 2020 on pre-production units. The UL machines had been actually built starting in late March and um, we will cover all these changes now here in the equipment and we will always show it on two different types of machines. So this unit I have standing here is the pre-production unit. The other unit I will be moving over in a minute for the upgrades there will be basically at that point then the UL unit. So let's go topic by topic and change by change and uh, that will hopefully give you an indication what to expect when you have to go out there. So the first thing is uh, the door interlocks. So the door interlocks here uh, remember the machine had uh, to cover the lower portion from the door. We had the interlock here and to reset that lock uh, you had to pull the pin out of it. The so second one was basically here on the top uh, was our second interlock. So that was the pre-UL version there. Let's go over and see what the UL version is. So the UL version we already have uh, the door open and uh, here we have uh, two interlocks and these interlocks are basically the same ones you find on a crescendo. So to activate this unit here and to activate that lock, you basically insert the key, uh, you twist it at that point and then uh, you basically have now the machine operating um, and uh, this part number for this one is the part number 51 953.0001. So you have these two keys here to be able to operate that one. Uh, so that was one of the changes up there. This is an upgrade which is necessarily not backwards compatible uh, because we have uh, to have the uh, changes in the chassis and that's not possible. The next change is um, I'm going back to the non-UL machine. Um, the next change here is our door prop. Um, so this door prop here is a very thin uh, bracket. Uh, so we also saw sometimes there that customers when they basically lifted or wanted to close again the, uh, the front door here uh, didn't operate that correctly. So for the upgraded currently built units we added uh, a sticker here. Uh, to basically indicate the customer or the operator, the operator to how to operate that door and uh, that you have to raise it. And uh, you also see that this bracket here is now much, much thicker. Um, so this is something whenever the old one uh, is bended or something like this, which is available so that you can install that um, uh, in the unit. This will be becoming as part of a UL upgrade kit, which we are currently creating. We don't have a part number for that one right now, uh, but uh, we will communicate that as soon as we have that part number available. Um, I'm going back again to the um, non-UL machine here. 
Um, so I already took out of the machine uh, the cover, the inside cover, to make uh, things accessible here. And um, the next one which got eliminated had been our two valves here to manually drain our boilers. So uh, these two valves here um, had been in there at the beginning to allow a person to drain the boilers without having the unit powered up or something like this and we didn't have the feature in the software. So with the new software version which is the currently released software version 2.0 we have now actually a feature in the software that you can drain the boilers via uh, software. So with this, the new production units do not have these anymore. And if I now look here into my UL version, um, down here, you do not see these uh, shutoffs anymore. So that elimination is there. Um, you have to have software version 2.0 running on that one. And then you can drain the tanks via software. The next one um, is basically we have a different puck ejector. So the different, this is the existing puck ejector, what we had out here on the non-UL machine. Um, the difference is nothing here changed in regards to the rubber or the magnet and the sensor there to uh, see it there. Uh, it was changed in this way on the UL version to have this ring here. So this ring is there to ensure that when the operator is removing this puck ejector that he can easily grab it and he doesn't have to go in with the fingers into the brew mechanism to catch it. So it's an ease of operation. Uh, this is a release part. Um, this part number here with the ring attached to it is a part number 54802.0001. And um, whenever you want to upgrade this one to your customers, uh, that's a part number of what you need to get for this one. Um, the next thing is, um, the la or the last thing on, on this machine here from the front is, we added an additional fuse to protect our touchscreen. Uh, and uh, this fuse is on the new machine sitting here. We don't have that here on the non-UL machine. So if I move over to the UL machine, you suddenly find here that 3M fuse. So that 3M fuse is there to protect the equipment uh, or the display specifically here uh, for any kind of uh, um, over voltages or something like this. So um, I will be moving now real quick the equipment to the sides and then we will look what changed on uh, the electrical component side there. Uh, so I'll be back in a second. So we are looking to the side uh, where we have all our electrical uh, components from the equipment. And uh, the first thing what I would like to point out in the pre-production units, we had down here in the base, we had two small fans to basically cool down uh, this uh, additional side here underneath of the panels. In the UL machines, uh, these two fans are no longer there uh, uh, in, this, in this machine available. So that, that's an elimination from the two fans there. Uh, the next one is to protect. We have additional fuses in our power lines going to the high voltage board. So this one, the pre-production unit goes straight into uh, the power board. While on this machine, you basically see, A, we have a fuse here in it, and then B, we also had to insulate these tubes or these, these wires uh, additionally with this uh, clear tubing there. So uh, that changed for uh, the wiring harness here. Uh, we also changed, you know, this was a, a metal piece on the, on the um, non-UL version and this is a cardboard hard plastic piece here. Um, the most important thing I think from a technician standpoint what uh, everybody will love is uh, remember on the pre-production units uh, we had the wiring harness for the components 
uh, going straight onto our control board. So we always had to disconnect um, the, uh, these wires right here on the boards. On the UL machine, uh, you see now that we have here an additional wire plug in it. So we can basically disconnect every individual module here in the back. And we do not have to disconnect it anymore directly from the control board uh, here. Um, I will be now moving the unit back uh, to the other side where we have our hydraulic components. So give me a minute and I will be back. So this is now the hydraulic side from the pre-production unit. And uh, what we change on the pre-production uh, side versus UL is on the pre-production we had the three SSRs here which had been very, very uh, big uh, and uh, bunky. So uh, on the UL machine, these SSRs are significantly smaller, same functionality than the other ones, but they are also not interchangeable. On uh, the pre-production ones, you had to have a screwdriver to basically wire the, uh, the uh, uh, SSR there, while here we have all plugs, so it's an easy interchangeable again. You cannot change uh, and use an SSR from that unit on that one or versa visa but the functionality there is the same. Um, on the, on the uh, hydraulic side, on the plumbing side, uh, there had been not really a huge change. We, for example, just relocated a couple of things. Uh, so this pressure transducer now here on the pre-production unit is because of a different hydraulic plumbing there now moved down here in between. So it's not really very significant. But what you will be seeing is uh, we have different valves. Uh, so remember all the Roma valves, they have a part number on it. And we have valves which are normally open and which are normally closed. You will be seeing that uh, these clips, which are basically the lock clips, uh, they have two different colors as well. So with this, this is an additional help and support to make sure that you don't put a normally closed valve into a normally open spot or vice versa to make sure that the indication is there. So that's just uh, a nice, a nice uh, support there. Um, I mentioned that one earlier already. We are running currently the software version 2.0. Uh, we will be releasing very soon a software version 3.0. Uh, whenever that software version is released, we will communicate that via the learning center so that you're aware of these changes uh, out there and um, download it and then upload it onto the equipment. Um, in the past, uh, the pre-production units, they never came with a cord cap. The unit which is now produced on the line has a NEMA L630R cord cap on it. Um, so uh, that's, that's our cord cap here. So uh, you don't have to carry one with you anymore. Uh, that cord cap is also always referenced uh, on the pre-installation checklist so that uh, when a customer site has to be ready, you know, he knows what to uh, have for an outlet right there. Uh, I would like at this point as well to point out two additional things. Uh, we showed that during the class. Um, again, the first one is uh, we have this uh, wrench. We call it the wrench uh, bezel fast cup. Uh, this wrench can be used for two things. So the first one is the big one here we can use for the ring on the upper piston um, to remove that one there uh, without damaging the, um, the, the stainless steel there. Very important that we don't get any marks on it. Remember if you get any marks on it and the brew mechanism is always going in, uh, the lower brew chamber is as well uh, a plastic one, so you would get scratches there and then eventually it would be leaking. So um, this is available as a bun part number. Uh, the bun part number for this one is a 55419.0000. Um, the second one, uh, what you can use that for is uh, the smaller ones here. Um, you can always use it here for the strainer uh, on the, oh, you cannot see it here. Uh, you can use it here on the strainer um, from the um, outlet from the spout. Uh, the last thing, uh, the last tool, what I would like to uh, point out what is needed. 
this is a Knippet, uh, a circle pliers. Uh, the part number from this one is, the Knippex part number is 4621A21. Um, this is needed if you want to remove the lower piston out of the root chamber there. Uh, you need to have that tool there. Bun doesn't have this as a tool, but you can get that via Amazon, uh, Granger, or wherever you buy your tools there. Um, so these had been all the changes coming from pre-production to UL. Uh, as soon as there are kits available to convert units, uh, we will communicate that. Uh, as well, we will then start the communication on you know, which units have to be converted and which not. And um, I hope that this was a kind of a little bit an idea about what to expect when you now install a unit. Uh, you will probably like a lot of these things here. And uh, I would like to get now and open this round here for questions you might have had uh, already within the first touches from the equipment. So whatever you have now here, uh, let's talk about this one. And uh, for um, everybody else, thanks for listening and um, we'll see you soon. So open to any questions here. I, one thing I would like to point out uh, at the end of this change from UL to versus pre-production is that um, this unit is a strict 208 volt 30 amp unit. Uh, you cannot run this unit uh, on 240 volt, uh, whatever will happen at that point is that uh, the um, uh, 240 volt will be basically damaging grinders as well as the power board. So um, I keep that in mind whenever you go to a site for an installation, measure the voltage, make sure that it is not exceeding 208 uh, or 212 is okay. And then uh, in case uh, it's a 240 outlet, uh, contact the customer, contact us here to make sure that this is getting corrected there. Um, so, uh, questions, um, do, are there any questions from anybody? I saw a chat coming through, give me one second here. Um, uh, so the question was about the new relays uh, and uh, what they look like. Uh, so these are again uh, SSRs, they are much, much smaller uh, versus the other bulky ones where you had to take basically a screwdriver and uh, screw the wires on it. This one here basically has just a plug and uh, you can basically unplug it, uh, screw a new one on it and plug it back on. So it's much, much smaller. Um, and um, so with this, uh, there's a little bit more space in that, that area there as well, as much as it's a little bit more service friendly. Any, any other questions I could answer here or something like this? Uh, yeah, the next one came in. Um, so how do we get stickers? Uh, I need one for Bucky's. Uh, I will reach out to you uh, and we will see how we can get that done. I will take that as a note. Uh, the sticker has a part number. Uh, it will be coming with the UL kit. Uh, we will be thinking about uh, who, which customer is getting that one. That's mostly driven from the sales side there. And, uh, but I will reach out to you in regards to that sticker. So if there are no any further questions, um, I would uh, basically close it here uh, for the day. I would say uh, thanks for the participation and uh, joining in this you know, upgrade webinar here. Um, enjoy the weekend, stay safe out there and uh, see you. Oh, another one came in. Uh, the part number for the wrench, um, we will also communicate that after that one. Uh, as a short email, it's right at this point out there. Uh, thanks, Jim, for that one there. Um, so that's uh, the bezel there, what you can order. Um, okay, thanks, very good. 
I would say thank you very much then and uh, stay safe and have a good weekend. Thanks, bye.